Y'all don't even know the hassle I go through to try and bring you guys a video. For real. So, sorry about me not being dressed, but it's evening. And it took me this long to get to it. And I'm very sorry, but I am a mom and I am a wife. And I have wifey and mom things to do. So I apologize that it took me this long. I know guys, my hair is really gray. But I can't afford to dye my hair. So I'm just letting it grow out now. Besides, the gray is not that bad, is it? Kind of just looks snowy. Festive, almost. Alright, let me get my veil. This is my sleeping veil. My hair looks a little bit better now, doesn't it? In my veil. There. I guess this is what I can do for now. Okay guys, so I wanted to do a quick video today. I have a lot that I have to go over and it's gonna take me hours. So I didn't want to leave you guys with nothing. So I'll give you guys some stuff. So the other night, I think it was going into yesterday morning, I had a dream that I met Brother Wally from Revelations of Jesus Christ and Lioness. She gave me a scarf for my head. It was beautiful and pink. It had flowers and it was silky. Um, the second time I saw her, she was wearing a yellow shirt and she hugged me. And I didn't grow up in a household where you get hugged a lot. so. I'm pretty awkward when somebody hugs me because I'm not very used to being hugged. I'm not like, you know, that kind of person. But in the dream, I was, I was feeling awkward about it. And then I was like, maybe this should be like a normal thing for me. And I felt bad for feeling awkward in the dream. I remember that vividly. Uh... She gave me another pinkish purple scarlet scarf that was flowery uh, and she tied it around my waist and said this this one is for your waist and she smiled at me then I looked over and I saw a baby girl sitting in like a high chair kind of thing and I asked them if they could see her and they looked at each other and started explaining what was happening in the situation but I knew it was not a ghost, but a demon. So I cast it down in the name of Jesus Christ. I woke up saying, I cast you down in the name of Jesus Christ. And I felt like I was being watched. So it was, it was strange. But as we know from what I read from Project Bluebeam, right? That um, they do that right they project certain things and they make you feel like you're being watched or they astral project and stuff they have a bunch of different things that they can do so I know that you guys have noticed some of my postings recently and it seems like I'm talking to a certain person or about somebody particular so I got out of jail, as you guys know, not too long ago, like literally two days ago, on Facebook, and then yesterday on YouTube. And straight out of the gate, trolls be trolling. That's that's for sure. So I saw this post from this person who added me as a friend, and I I was thinking to myself, why are they adding me when they know I'm about Jesus? 
why are these new agers specifically adding me when they know that I'm about Jesus? And because I get so many friend requests a day, it's not like I can go and vet all of them, right? So I literally just add them as friends. And I don't know their new agers right away till I see one of their posts in my news feed. I have a thing about hair near my mouth, so don't worry about that. Uh, it's just OCD. Anyway, <laughs> um, so yesterday I saw this post from a new ager. She was talking about Adam and Eve and explaining it in scientific terms of biological, um, you know, electrons and atoms and whatnot and trying to like basically discredit the Bible. I think y'all know exactly what I did. I was like, nope, the Bible is real. This is disgusting. New age, new agers need to stop this cultic like mentality of trying to like tear down anything of a religion that has nothing to do with nothing. Why are you always telling people that it's it's just phony and stuff. Why can't you just leave us alone? Like that's what they they're always saying. We just we just want tolerance and oneness and and, and singularity and No, they don't. No sooner did I say um the Bible describes what um Adam and Eve is and they are real people. They are earth parents, right? I basically just throughout scripture okay and said the post was disgusting no sooner did I do that new agers were like oh that's funny and they were laughing at my comment and like trying to like stumble me but I was like you know you could choose Jesus you have free will to sin and live in sin and die in your sin sure and you have the free will to choose life. And it ain't too late to choose Jesus, who is everlasting life. They laughed at that comment. And then tried again in, a, in so many different ways. And then this one, Ivana or whatever her name is. She obviously has generational curses and a whole bunch of trauma in her spirit that she needs to work through. This is ego. We know this already. Till she does her shadow work, she will not be able to see the enlightenment that we're trying to bring. I said, I was of this for 23 years. I know about witchcraft, the occult, spiritism, uh, new age, Reiki work, shadow work definitely that's what I was working on before I was saved all my ancestral curses and you know spirit ties that I needed to sever because they were holding me back that's what my spirit guides were telling me and I went into great detail of what I used to do and I told this person that right and then I said and Jesus saved me in the midst of it by his grace and mercy, I got washed in the blood of the Lamb, and I came to the truth. There's only one truth, and that's Jesus. And then she laughed at my comment and my other two comments, so she laughed at three comments. And then she says to me something else. I don't know. Oh yeah, she threw scripture at me from Psalms, okay? And said that Jesus said this in Psalms, right? Jesus was speaking in Psalms and said that, did I not tell you that ye were gods? Totally out of context. And I explained to her, I said, first of all, that wasn't Jesus that said that. David wrote the Psalms. Right? <laughs> so I corrected her on that, the author of that book. Right? Then I said, and just so you know, uh, he's mocking the people who believe that they're gods. You know, the Pharisees. See, if you read the passages before and after, it gives full context 
taking one uh, scripture out of context to try and prove a point proves nothing because you don't have the full context. You're literally saying the middle of the sentence and trying to prove that as your point, as your punchline. That's ridiculous. Right? So I said, he was making fun of the Pharisees. If you, if you look and see, God's is with a lowercase g, which is mocking them for thinking that they could ever be on the same level as God. Simple as that, right? And then um, I said uh, something to the effect of, did you even read my previous comment about how I was part of New Age for 23 years-ish? Not new age specifically for maybe I went back through my stuff and I started the new age stuff around 2018. So and then I was saved in 2020. So two two years I was doing new age stuff. But before that I was quite spiritual, obviously. Being pagan is spiritual. I was about keeping the earth, earth keeper you know, one with the, one with Gaia, blah, 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 right? And I was doing tarot, and I was doing spells, and I was celebrating the pagan holidays, and blah, 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 right? So I explained this to this woman twice now, okay? And then she completely ignores that, and then posts on her page about me. So I commented on the post, and I said, you are a heretic and a liar because, first of all, pulling that scripture out of context still and trying to say that I was lying and saying and accusing you of whatever is a lie. It's an absolute lie. So I called her out and then she deleted my comments and then addressed me personally in a second comment, okay, which y'all seen. And then I addressed her underneath that comment and I said, you deleted my comments, how is anybody supposed to see what's actually happening if it's only one person's narrative? Clearly, you're not about educating and the truth. You want to manipulate and lie and keep the narrative in your court. That's what's really going on here, right? This is what I said. And I said, and I told you twice already that I was part of the new age for 23 years. And you want to just completely eliminate the 23 years that I actually understood and was practicing and experiencing new age stuff throw all that out the window just to bring up the fact that now i'm with the lord and you want to say that i'm delusional and irrational and and naive no i'm not i know what i'm talking about the bible is the truth after 23 years i didn't have to find the truth in hundreds of other books i only need one then I gave scripture. I said, everything I said to you was uh, what the Bible said. I never judged you. I never said you didn't, you didn't believe that the Bible wasn't true. I never said any of those things. All I said was she was incapable of understanding the scriptures the way I do because I have the Holy Spirit. And that's the truth. That's what the Bible teaches. I said that she um, took the scriptures out of context and twisted them to her own to to make to make it sound the way she wanted to which is wrong and revelations literally warns us against taking and removing and adding to the scriptures does it not i mean revelations 22 if you guys really want to know where it's at the last i believe it's the last three um i have my bible here it's my it's the last three scriptures i believe Hold on, y'all. I'll get it for you. And if any man shall take away from the words of this book, uh, take words of the book of this pro uh, prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city. And from the things which are written in this book, he which testifieth these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come, uh, Lord Jesus, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. And then further up it says, For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of this prophecy of this, uh, 
hear the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man taketh away, it says the same thing, right? So it literally warns you about twisting scripture to make it sound like something along the effects that you want it to. It's the same thing that they do, which I did too when I was in the new age. Take the scripture where he says, um, if thine eye be single, then your whole body will be light, right? What he's literally speaking about is your brain, your thoughts. See, I didn't have the full context. It was just an isolated scripture out of context. But if you read the verses before and after, he's talking about your thoughts, your mind. It had nothing to do with the third eye. It was your brain, your thoughts. Quite literally. But this is what New Agers do. Take two freaking things out of context, two different scriptures, and only a portion of the frame of it, just so that it sounds the way they want it to sound. This is what this is what the news media does too. It's no different. They take a situation, they break it down into a few words, and it can either elevate the situation or cause a ruckus. And more often than not, they decide to cause a ruckus, do they not? It's the same thing. They twist things. But, you know, it's no it's no marvel because even Satan himself turned himself into an angel of light. So is it any wonder that his ministers uh, come in the uh, form of light as well? Not at all. They be of their father, the devil. And that's the truth. They don't understand that who they following is actually Satan. And she said I called her a demon or something of, to that effect. And I said, no such thing. I said that where she's getting her information from is Bluebeam, which is Satan's plan and demonic. That's what I said. But because she didn't read what I wrote, she just skimmed through and saw certain words, twisted it, then spit out whatever she wanted to say about me. You know what I mean? No truth in her at all. No honesty at all. And throughout the whole thing, I was thinking to myself, she's supposed to be this high vibrating being, right? This being of light, beam of light here on earth. That's what they believe. But she's the one that's throwing shade, lying, which it gives you karmic ties, by the way, in her world. I know this from experience. So she's causing herself karmic ties. But I'm the one that's a religious spirit. I'm bad. Your religion has caused so much trouble throughout the ages. Not my religion personally. See, everybody keeps getting it twisted. There's a difference between Catholicism and Christianity. They ain't the same. One worships a goddess and the other worships the Lord Jesus Christ and Father God Abba. Elohim Jehovah. Two different religions, okay? Completely different. Catholicism has done a lot of damage over the centuries. Yes, they have. Because they are a revived Roman Empire. Their roots in Babylonian Dagon worship. And if you don't know anything about that, Google these terms. The Pope is the pr false prophet of Dagon from a fallen Babylonian religion. A new revived uh, Roman Empire. Quite literally, Babylon, Roman, 
whore. Okay? That's Catholicism. Do they not call Catholicism the mother religion? Quite literally, they do. So, I've had to deal with some trolls. One, New Age cult members. And then I have the other, which is number two, Pharisees. Now, Pharisees are hilarious because they're either unbeliever trolling me like a Pharisee, asking me stupid questions like the Pharisees used to ask Jesus and the apostles to try and get them to slip up, or they're a religious spirit, and I say this because there are like a religious spirit like Catholicism and Pharisaic that cause them to want to put you under bondage and yoking in the wrong areas, right? Now, like I've said before, you can't separate religion from God and Jesus. Quite literally, to worship is, is a religion, okay? That's a religious practice to worship. To honor a God is a religious practice. So you are practicing a religion when you follow Christ and God. No way around it, y'all. No way around it. And even the Bible says, I, I can't remember exactly where it is. It's in James. In James, it says that the pure religion is that of the Father. And then it goes on to explain what pure religion is. So, that, I'm sorry, but we're in a religion, okay? But religious spirits are those of the Pharisaic kind and or trolls who are unbelievers who have a Pharisaic spirit in them. And I deal with these two types daily. One will say, you're too young in the faith to understand or interpret the scriptures. You have no idea what you're talking about. You haven't studied it long enough. Yes, I know, because every day for the last 22 months, reading, studying, learning, and just absorbing isn't long enough, right? Paul literally was blinded on the way to Damascus blind for three days, never spent a day with Jesus, not one day, okay, when he was alive. After he got his sight back, he never went to see the apostles for three and a half years into his ministry. The moment he was baptized after he got his sight back, he went out and preached Jesus Christ. How? He had no knowledge of him. He had no, uh, walkings with him, no fellowship with him of any sort. And he had no contact with any of the apostles for three years into his ministry. So how come he could go out and preach Christ, but you telling me that me being two years in the faith, I can't interpret scripture? Do I not have the Holy Spirit as soon as I'm saved? Because the Bible tells me that as soon as I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and I accept that uh, that he died for my sins and that he was risen on the third day and I accept him into my heart and I confess all my sins and I ask him to save me, that I'm saved. And then I am baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire. Well, not the fire, but Holy Ghost. I am baptized in the Holy Ghost immediately. So which is it? Do I have the Holy Spirit? Or does that happen after a, a long time in the faith? Because I'm not understanding. If I have the Holy Spirit, then yes, I can interpret scripture immediately. It doesn't take time. Yes, I should um, study every day, which I do. So you can't say that I'm not doing my due diligence of studying because I am. Literally, if you go through the history on my YouTube you would quite literally see that all day, every single day, I'm watching sermons. If it told you the hours in which I watch them, I wake up, grab a coffee, watch a sermon. Then I do schooling, cleaning, wife stuff, while I'm still listening to the sermon on my iPad. 
Then I get all my other stuff done. Watching a sermon or listening to it. Then when I'm done doing those things, I'm also, I got my head wrap on so that I can pray. I pray throughout the day. If I'm not praying, I'm, I'm listening to a sermon. If I'm not listening to a sermon, I'm reading. If I'm not reading, I'm studying uh, the scriptures. If I'm not studying the scriptures, I'm meditating on the scriptures. If I'm not meditating, I'm watching a sermon. And if I'm not, sermon, uh, I'm not watching a sermon, I'm praising. And if I'm not praising, I'm singing uh, hymnals and, and psalms. And if I'm not doing that, I'm doing something else. I'm always about my father's business. There ain't a moment in the day that I ain't talking about the Bible, thinking about the Bible, talking to Jesus, thinking about Jesus, wanting to pursue Jesus, wanting to pursue this. I'm all about the kingdom. I'm all about heaven. I'm laying out my treasures in heaven. Why do you think, why do you think I have been so greatly like blessed? And I'm not like boasting because I'm poor, but I'm blessed in other ways. I'm poor. I can't even afford hair dye, as I've said. But I'm blessed in other ways. I have an abundance of love. I have two beautiful children and a husband who loves me. And I have a very great life. It's, it's an amazing life. I don't have riches. We can't go on vacation. We can't go and buy whatever we want. We can't do a lot of things that other people do that's, that, that makes them happy in life. I'm happy for different reasons. I'm happy because I have a roof over my head. I have heat that I'm warm at night. I have clothes. My kids are fed. We're comfortable. And that's Jesus because I don't ask for anything. I only ask for the bare necessities. And he provides all of that for me. So I have nothing to complain about. I'm very blessed. There's so many other people that don't even have the things that I have. They don't have a roof over their head. They don't have heat. They don't have a phone. They don't have television or internet. These things I'm blessed with. And I know those are blessings. And I thank the Lord all the time for those blessings. I'm very grateful and appreciative to him. And he knows. He can see my heart. And how hard I pursue after him. The other way that I'm blessed is the fact that I get warnings, I get dreams. And recently I've had quite a few dreams. Some of the dreams I'm aware that I'm allowed to share and then the others I'm aware I'm not. So it's a personal, like if it's one for just me to know, hey, there's something up with this person. You need to be aware of this. And the Lord will warn me about a person, right? And the Lord has warned me about a person recently. So that's a personal one I keep to myself, right? I can't just go and be like, hey, I had a dream about you. The Lord told me this and that, this and that, right? <laughs> no, I, I don't, I don't. What's, what's between me and the Lord is between me and the Lord. And then whatever is allowed to be spoken about, like the one about Brother Wally and Lioness and the demon, for instance, I wanted to share that one because I think the Lord wanted me to share that one to let you guys know that maybe in our dreams, they're trying to attack certain saints now where they come in as like a, a ghost or they try to cause us fear, for instance. If you're strong in, in the Lord and you're praying and you're fasting and you're reading your word and you're in, you're like seeking after the Holy Ghost, right? All the time, like me then in the dream you're aware of what's happening, like I was. I was able to cast that demon down in the name of Jesus because I knew what I was looking at. I knew it wasn't a ghost. I was like, can you see this, this little child here, this baby? And they said, yeah. And then they tried to explain to me that it's an astral projection or whatever. And I was like, no, 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 that's a demon. <laughs> I was like, that's a, that's a full demon, okay? That's not a manifestation of somebody's spirit. That is a demon. And I cast it down in the name of Jesus Christ. And I woke up saying, I cast you down in the name of Jesus Christ. And the reason I woke up saying that and felt like I was being watched because a demon was trying to like take some, some kind of like energy from me, I guess. I, I don't know how to describe it. They need energy. They, they're fed through fear, right? Like, um, 
how I try to explain it is, have you ever seen Monsters, Inc. and how the children, when they scream, those little tanks fill up and they need that to run their whole entire world or realm? Well, it's the same for demons. They can't run their demon realm without fear, which is why I can't help now. It doesn't matter. I could be... I could literally be watching something just to like clear my mind. I, I think I've talked about this before. I was watching Captive State, which is just a strange movie. I thought it was a strange title. Captive State. I'm watching it. And I kid you not. One of the informants for the resistance, his name was Rittenhouse. I was like, what in the world? And this movie was made in 2019. I'm like, that was like a, that was a pre-programming, right? I was like, and then the dude that was the resistance leader, he died or he was supposed to have been dead. They had his picture painted on the wall for a mural. I don't know how to say it. Merle? Mural? A memorial of some sort. Mural. You know what I mean, right? The face looked like George Floyd. No lie. It was just his face. It was George Floyd's face. No lie. Mur mural. I was like, you can't make this stuff up. It was pre-programming. Rittenhouse and George Floyd. A year before it happened. This is the kind of stuff that I see all the time. I can't even watch a movie without seeing it. I see Merkabah's, uh, Seal of Solomon, Saturn, <laughs> Sun Worship, Nimrod. Like, everywhere. I can't, like, Baal, Moloch, everywhere. Every single movie. It doesn't matter. It doesn't even matter if it's a children's show or if it's an adult show or if it's a comedy or if it's like a B movie. I see the symbolism all over the place and I can't turn it off. It's just, it's just there. Currently, for my downtime after listening to like sermons for nine hours a day, quite literally, because Brother Wally does sermons that are like an hour and a half. Sometimes they're two hours. Sometimes they're three hours. And I'll listen to the whole thing. I don't care how long it is. The word is the word. And my spirit needs that feeding. Because I just need to be spiritually fed all the time. I am like a vacuum. I just want to eat all the spiritual food I can. Right? And so I listen to his sermons all day. Nine hours. And that ain't even exaggeration. From the moment I wake up, all throughout the day, I'm listening to a sermon. Yep. All day. All day. And he's got a lot of sermons. Then I go to the, his website because I'm a member of his online ministry. And I can watch the other sermons too. Again, which I've already watched them, but I, I watch them again. Just to remember what he was talking about. Like, I like the one about the um, seven pillars. So I watch the seven pillars and things of that nature. The altars of light and dark, which is a really good message. And then some other ones. But aside from that, at the end of the day, when I'm eating my food, I want to just turn my brain off for a little while, you know? Because it's just rolling with, like, scriptures and, and Jesus. And I'm just like... Wow, just marveling over the things I know and learning, right? So, recently I started watching Into the Badlands. I remember some symbolism was in there. I didn't really care too much about most of it. I knew that it was about like chakras, um, Avatar. Like if you've ever seen the cartoon Avatar, you understand what I'm talking about. It's about elevating your inner soul or whatever. And there's a lot of that symbolism in there. But the weirdest thing about the whole thing is it's following this boy called MK. MK got kidnapped by somebody called the Widow. 
and she has like these girls girl assassins that are called butterflies mk butterflies i mean you can't get any more plain sight than that can i get a mk ultra monarch programming get it i'm sure most of you do but this is the thing and then okay so there's like this symbol that he was carrying around on his neck the place is called asgarth or asgard or something like that azeroth or something sounds very lord of the rings to me and or harry potter one of them had something like that or was it was it world of warcraft i can't remember it was one of them <laughs> one of them anyway but the city itself looked like the city of like emerald city in the wizard of oz coincidence they ain't no coincidences man none now this is a different world like they have cars so it was like um, probably like a futuristic apocalyptic future that happened where there was like a some kind of catastrophe or catastrophe how my husband would say it catastrophe that happened that wiped out most of the civilizations on the world on the earth and then all that was left was Seven barons. Seven regions. Can you say a beast rose up out of the waters with seven heads, ten horns, and ten crowns? Ringing any bells. seven regions and they have seven barons and then they're baronesses in certain cases which would make ten horns and ten crowns wouldn't you say but back to what I was saying uh, so these trolls they try to manipulate me, intimidate me, and dominate me. That's their witchcraft. Uh, they're operating in witchcraft, which they don't even know that they're operating in it. Okay? They don't understand that when they're saying certain things or doing certain things, that they're operating in, you know, the demonic realm. And they don't even realize that they open their doors to allowing a demonic spirit in them. Now, whether the demonic spirit's been there the whole time or it just sneaks in during that moment of carnal carnality and it just swoops in at the right moment because they're unsaved and they have no protection, like Jesus and the Holy Ghost. Whether or not, I don't care what the situation is. All I know is that when you intimidating someone, manipulating them, and trying to dominate them with virtue signaling and saying something dumb through a pharisaic spirit, then sorry, but you demonically possess. Like that's that's just how I see it. That's how I that's how I feel. Every single time I get a comment, either two things happen. One, I get annoyed, which tells me eh, this person just silly two I get hot my whole body burns up which tells me it's a demon so that's what happens so I've got a question if I'm so delusional and naive and egotistical why is it when I correct you, New Agers, with my knowledge and experience for 23 years, to be exact, you're the only one acting a fool? Why can't you read what I'm actually saying? Are you reading my words at all? I doubt it 
because if you were, you wouldn't lie about what I actually said. Or would you? I wonder what kind of higher vibrations uh, lying brings. Last time I checked, you're supposed to be honest and truthful to keep the balance. At least when I was practicing, truth and honesty were requirements, so I didn't bring karmic curses on me for tipping the balances. But what do I know? I follow Christ now, so 23 years experience, knowledge, learning, and practice mean nothing, right? Oh, and then the Pharisees. Well, you're not very far in your walk with Christ to be able to properly interpret scripture and apply it appropriately. Yes, I am. Paul never walked with Christ a day, never even went to see the apostles for three years after he was saved. Once he got his sight back three days later, he was saved that day. He went out and preached to everyone who would listen. Funny how he was only minutes in the faith, uh, but had more knowledge than me. I, I read, pray, follow the scriptures. I have the Holy Spirit. Who are you to say, I don't have the anointing to interpret? These are the two types of people I deal with every single day. And then I get people like this. Remember I told you about the three tactics of witchcraft? Manipulation, intimidation, domination. Well, that fall, falls right in there. I rejoice though, for great is my reward that is in heaven. I'm not from here and I do uh, nothing but work for the kingdom. And I'm about my father's business 24-7. I love my God. I am laying up my treasures in heaven. So while I'm annoyed by new age cultists and Pharisees and trolls, I'm glad that I'm counted worthy. After all, if you're not being censored or persecuted, are you even working properly for the kingdom? Now don't get offended. Some are not quite sure how to fight for the kingdom, but you could just ask. I'm willing to help, mostly just speak out, be loud, scream Jesus is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. When he blesses you, testify, praise him loudly and proudly, and don't be afraid to do so. Read two to four pages of your Bible a day, pray for 20 to 30 minutes, work up to an hour, or do three 15 minute sessions or five 10 minute ses sessions. Or do whatever, uh, or do whatever you can to pray. I do. I pray throughout the day. I never stop during the day. I just pray and talk to the Father in my in my mind all day long. Watching edifying sermons, not feel good ones, but convicting ones. I have some recommendations if you'd like some. I can tell you my day if you want, um, which I already did basically. Um, how I walk throughout the day. <laughs> and I pray while I'm trying to go to sleep at night. That's why I wear a veil. Uh, when I lay down, after I turn out the light, after I'm done reading my uh, two to four pages at night, I turn out the light and I'm praying while I'm trying to sleep. I'm either ministering to my family, praying, reading, watching a sermon, or some variation thereof. I'm never idle. I'm always doing something for the Lord. Sometimes I'm educating, debating, teaching, or explaining, correcting, guiding others toward Jesus. I don't do anything else. This is why I'm so passionate. The Holy Spirit is burning inside me. And so I speak and move as the Spirit moves. I don't like people telling me how I ought to speak and behave when they don't even know how my Jesus spoke and behaved. That being said, uh, tomorrow when I do my video, which is going to take all day, so I'm gonna start early, 
we're going to start in the Bible's beginning. The beginning of everything. And then I'm going to go to their beginning story, which is the Big Bang. Then we're going to go through the 12 zodiac signs. And it's not an accident that there's 12 because Satan has to mirror Jesus' apostles, right? I'm also going to tell you how many constellations there are in the sky, which is interesting. And how many tarot cards are in a tarot deck, which is interesting. Then I'm going to tell you what does the Bible say about astrology. Then I'm going to tell you how New Age uses astrology. Then I'm going to tell then I'm going to tell you uh was Bethlehem star biblical? Then I'm going to tell you how the world perceives the uh star of Bethlehem. Then I'm going to tell you what new agers believe about the celestial world or realm and how they believe that they're star seeds. Certain, certain of them, some of them believe that they're star seeds and that they have a galactic family, that they're from a star system brought here for the elevation of humanity and raising the vibrations of the earth. I know I went over this before, but we're talking specifically about stars and to expose how it came to be like this, I have to show you how they think. And how what they believe right versus what the Lord wants us to know and trust and believe right then we're gonna go back into blue beam and I'm going to use blue beam to explain some of it because it makes a lot more sense once you understand what how they think and what and where their like thought pattern comes from their knowledge their their um, belief system and they're and basically they're mysteries, right? If you believe, if you if you understand what they believe and think, and the mysteries of their whole entire construct, and then we go back to Project Bluebeam and look how that happened, then you can literally see Satan's fingerprint in all of it, and then it makes a lot more sense of why they act so crazy when you call them out on it. You just have to say, Sage doesn't repel demonic uh, entities. They flip out. Chakras don't exist. They lose their minds. <sighs> Yoga, quite literally, is yoking and union with Brahma, which is a Hindu god of the universe, and all the poses pay homage to a goddess or a god of false religion. They literally can't handle it. They just, you're wrong. How dare you? This is your ego talking. Blah, blah, blah. Work on yourself before you judge others. Didn't the Bible say, judge not lest ye be judged? Well, that's some serious high vibrational energy there. How about you tone it down? And look at this logically. If it's so peaceful, why are you so angry? If it's so beautiful and it's the only truth, then how come it can't stand on itself? If my Bible was uh, misinterpreted and mistranslated, then why are you afraid of it? Oh, you're not afraid of it? Then why are you reacting like you are? Oh, you just you just don't like religious people. Okay, so how do you feel about yourself? Because you're a part of a religion. You're a religious person. Oh, you don't think that what you follow and believe in isn't a religion? Well, um, belief in a higher deity is religion. 
many deities or just one personal God. Doesn't matter. Religion. So how do you feel about yourself? They can't answer these questions and they hate it. They hate when I come at them with just simple, logical like questions. And when they ask me, if they try to throw the question back at me, like, oh, how do you feel about religion? I give them scripture. I have scripture backed up for every single question because you know what? For some strange reason, this has the answer to every single freaking question on this earth. Can you believe that? This. You can ask a question. This has the answer to everything. Everything. I can't even believe how much answer this is. I was literally, I, I literally just sat on Google the other day. Scripture about, and then I asked a question. Scripture came up, man. And not just like one, 25 scriptures about what you asked about. I'm like, there's 25 answers in the Bible to my question? Holy moly. So when they ask me, how do you feel about religious people? James, whatever. Uh, the pure religion of God, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and then they're like, how do you feel about new age? What does the Bible say about new age? And then I post what the Bible says about new age. And then they're like, well, you just have a scripture for everything, don't you? Absolutely, because that's what I believe in. I believe this book is the truth. And I believe the Lord gave it to me and anyone who wants to come to the Jesus as a weapon. It's not just, it's not just a book for us to read. It's our weapon against the enemy. That's why do you think the enemy is trying to discredit the Bible? What do all totalitarian um, regimes do before they become totalitarian? They disarm their people. So wouldn't it make sense that Satan also wants to disarm the people by discrediting and saying that the Bible was mistranslated, misinterpreted, and that there ain't no Bible on the planet that hasn't been corrupted? Quite literally putting doubt into the believer's mind about their only weapon against the enemy is disarming them. When you say witchcraft tactics, manipulation, intimidation, domination. We can literally see this all over the place. I mean, our governments are doing this right now. They're working in witchcraft. <laughs> oh, man. I can't even. It's just so blatant. Whew. Anyway, guys, this is my video for today. I'm sorry that I didn't get into the stars. I did a little bit. I wanted to talk about some current events and give you guys some hope. Like, if you guys need my help, let's say somebody's commenting on one of your posts that you post about Jesus or God or, or whatever you're posting about that has to do with the kingdom, okay? And some Pharisee or some troll or some unbeliever or new ager comes at you and says something. Ask me and I'll give you a scripture to back it up. Okay? I will give you as many scriptures as you want. I will teach you how to tactfully uh, arm up and uh, go to war with the enemy in the spirit realm with scriptures. Okay? Scriptures is our weapon. Scriptures is our sword of truth, right? The word of God. And we have on our breastplate of righteousness, our helmet of truth, 
our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, right? Well, above all, we have this shield, and we have our uh, we have our shield, we have our sword, and we have our belt and buckler, which is the Lord Jesus, right? Everything we have on is from the Lord Jesus and God, right? I cast you down in the name of Jesus Christ. Get out of my head. I do not want to hear you right now. I do not want to talk to you. I never want to talk to you ever again. You stay away from me right now. Get out of my mind. I cast you down in the name of Jesus Christ. I cast you down in the name of Jesus Christ. I cast you down in the name of Jesus Christ. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, sometimes, still, when I'm talking about certain things, my ears ring and then my throat and um, I know that anybody who's been in the new age and comes out has these kinds of instances okay the best thing you can do because it stops immediately as you just seen I get the ear ringing my head kind of does this thing where it feels like it's spun and then my throat starts going and I cough but I cast it down in the name of Jesus and then it's gone I'm going to go have a peppermint tea to soothe my throat and I will come back tomorrow and we will discuss uh, stars, cosmos, uh, the truth about the beginning of life versus the lie of evolution and the Big Bang. We're going to get into it, y'all. It's going to be fun. I'm excited, but I need a lot of rest for it, so... That's why I'm saying I'm going to do it tomorrow because I need a lot of time and I need to prepare properly for it. I was dealing with trolls today, so I just, I didn't have much energy to put into all of that at the moment, which is why I'm undressed in this video. But guys, as I said, have hope. We have the Lord Jesus Christ on our side. The Lord Jesus Christ on our side. And if you want, like, a war song to sing, are you ready? Instead of just hearing my ugly voice, let's listen to the real beautiful voice, okay? I have to go to my history here. History. I'm not here to sound pretty. I'm here to speak life to the dead. Warrior song, guys. I, I shall not fear. I, I shall not fear. Even, even when death is near, I shall not fear. Even when the end of days are here, I shall not fear. Because I know my Lord Jesus Christ is here. He walks inside me. He lives inside me. He walks beside me. He is with me. So I shall not fear the new world order. I shall not fear a guillotine. Oh no, I shall not be afraid when I walk through the shadows of death. I shall not be afraid when I walk through the valley of death. I shall not fear, 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 cause Jesus Christ is here, Jesus Christ is here, I shall not fear, I shall not fear, I shall not fear, I shall not fear, I shall not fear. I shall not fear, cause Jesus Christ is here, the Holy Ghost is here. I shall not fear, 
song and if you want any more encouraging music I can send you a lot because I, I got a whole list anyway guys I'm gonna go I'll catch you guys tomorrow it's gonna be a long one so expect a lot of videos see I'm gonna be doing them 10 minutes at a time 10 or 15 so I can upload the video as a video so that people don't have a problem watching it because when I upload it as a file apparently people can't see it so I have to do it in um, video um, form now. So only way of doing it is having it under 20 minutes. So 15, 10, 15 minute videos and that's it. And I'll be uploading them as videos. So it'll be easier for y'all to watch. I'm going to try to put this on YouTube and hopefully I don't get another strike. I didn't say anything too bad in here. I don't, I don't think I will get a strike for what I've said but I never know with YouTube but I guess I'll test the water let's see what happens hey eh? okay I didn't say anything that I shouldn't have said I don't think there are some certain buzzwords I shouldn't say but I only talk about Jesus here so hopefully we're safe we'll see I'll pray over it before I upload it um, and then if I get struck I will upload them 10 minutes at a time on telegram otherwise i'll just post the video after it's up on youtube yeah okay so i love you all i want to bless you all god bless you all and i want to make sure that you guys have a very good evening and i will catch you tomorrow don't worry please forgive me for not doing it today um i just didn't have time it's gonna take a long time you guys will see uh i have a lot of information but I love you all. God bless you. And I will catch you tomorrow and have a good evening. And I wish everybody has a wonderful Friday. Mwah. Later for now.